name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with our spirit. In today's reading, we hear of God's passion for God's people in their suffering, that God embraces them in loving arms. And so in this Eucharist, we bring to God our sufferings and the sufferings of the world, asking for God's strength and God's healing and protection. We pray together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. So let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who show us to them that be in error the light of thy truth, to the intent that they may return into the way of righteousness. Grant unto all them that are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may eschew those things that are contrary to their profession, and all things such as agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. 
But Abraham said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look towards heaven and count the stars, if you're able to count them. And then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O oh Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought them all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking firepot and a flaming torch passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. This is the word of the Lord.
our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Sanctifier. Amen. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. There are echoes here of many passages in the Hebrew Scriptures. In the Psalms, hide me under the shadow of your wings is a recurring theme. Moses tells the people, God cares for them like an eagle hovering over her young, sheltering them under her wings. And the closest equivalent, so close that Jesus may have been quoting directly, is in Esdras in the Apocrypha. The Lord Almighty says, have I not pleaded with you, as a father his sons, as a mother his daughters, her daughters, a nursing mother her babies? I gathered you together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. The mother bird sheltering her chicks was a familiar image for God. If we look carefully, we can find many occasions in the Bible where the image of mother is used for God. The Psalms and Job evoke a God who gave birth to creation. You were our refuge before the mountains were born or you had given birth to the world. And God says, where were you when the sea burst forth from the womb? Who has fathered the rain and who has given birth to the frost? Moses says to a rebellious Israel, you have forgotten the God who gave birth to you. And he says to the Lord, why do you lay the burden of this people on me? Did I conceive this people? Did I give birth to them? So why do you expect me to carry them and to suckle them? In other words, I wasn't the one who became pregnant and gave birth to this people. You were. You're their mother. You feed them. God is often shown as demonstrating motherly care protecting, feeding, guiding, as a mother does a small child. Sometimes this is not quite explicit. When Israel was a child, I loved him. I taught Ephraim to walk. I took him in my arms. I led him with cords of kindness. 
This is often assumed to be God speaking as a father. But caring for small children was women's work. So God as mother is equally valid here. And sometimes motherly and fatherly images appear together, given equal importance, as in the passage I quoted earlier, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, nursing mothers and infants. And in the Psalms, we can see the child's response. I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. I imagine a toddler climbing on her mother's lap for a cuddle. In the New Testament, of course, Jesus, who as a human being was male, addresses God as Father. But there is a central New Testament image of God as mother, which is often not recognized as such. In the opening passage of John's Gospel, to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, but born of God. And later in John, Nicodemus asked Jesus whether being born from above involves a second birth from the mother's womb. Jesus responds, what is born of the flesh is flesh, what is born of the spirit is spirit. I think the parallelism is clear, born of the flesh from a human mother, born of the spirit from the divine mother. Born of God surely implies an image of God as mother. In fact, throughout the New Testament, new birth is a very common metaphor for the change involved in becoming a Christian. Mother's milk is used as a metaphor for spiritual nourishment and teaching. Many Christians today talk about being born again without recognizing the implication that it was God who gave birth. There is plenty of biblical authority for thinking of God as mother as well as father. So could we perhaps sometimes pray heavenly mother instead of heavenly father Many people feel very uncomfortable with that. If that's you, I would like you to ask yourself, what makes you so uncomfortable? Perhaps it's a matter of what is familiar and traditional. The Father is what we are used to as our name for God. But motherly images were used with confidence from early Christian theologians like St. Augustine right through to Julian of Norwich in the 14th century. There may be another reason. Someone said to me recently that praying to God, addressing God as mother would be disrespectful. Does that portray a deep belief that actually God is male and God is not female. Which to me would imply that men are made in the image of God, women, oh, that's not quite so much. But deep down, the feeling that male is superior and female inferior is widespread. But let's put aside that, which is a human reaction, because I think there is too some deeper theology going on concerning the nature of God. Surely a God who is fully masculine but is not fully feminine would be incomplete, defective even. 
How can God the Creator lack the femininity which is embedded within creation? In fact, as Augustine and many others have recognized, describing God as essentially either male or female it could be called a category error. Those terms don't really apply. Both male and female are fully present within God's very being. And we, as human beings, reflect different aspects. After all, all our words about God are metaphors. All are partial and limited. And that includes the word Father. I suggest that we should include Mother in our repertoire to enrich and add an extra dimension to our prayers and our spirituality. Have you ever tried praying to your heavenly mother? If not, I urge you to try. It had a profound effect on me. My relationship with God as mother has introduced an extra dimension, addressing deep needs which I hadn't even been aware of. So remember, God, the mother hen, longs to gather her chicks under her wings. Are we willing? Amen. I believe in one God.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we humbly beseech thee to inspire continually the universal Church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, that all who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, hear us. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to thy servant Alan, our bishop, that they may both bear their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. To all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that they may serve thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We beseech thee, O Lord, to direct with thy heavenly wisdom those who rule over the nations of the world, praying especially for the people of the Ukraine at this time, and for those who have power to work for peace. Bless thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and all who exercise authority under her, that thy people may be faithfully and justly governed. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Of thy goodness, O Lord, help and comfort all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, granting them a happy issue out of all their afflictions. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious we commend thy gracious keeping, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, praying especially for Pamela Blackie, John Burgess, Linda Taylor, and all victims of conflict. We beseech thee to grant them everlasting light and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious we bless thy holy name for the grace and virtue declared in the Blessed Virgin Mary, Alban, and in all thy saints. Grant that we, rejoicing in their fellowship and following their good examples, may be partakers with them of thy heavenly kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirits. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and abundant duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. And now we give thee thanks, because thou dost give us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace, as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
glory be to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Here, as O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. Although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offences, and to grant that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in our manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, 
and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, who seest that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.